Hello again. So this micro lecture is going to be on net force. And we'll talk about what net force is. Mainly, it's how do we address when there are multiple forces on an object and kind of get a sense of the overall picture of what's happening. As always, you need three or more bullet points worth of notes. You need a one to two sentence summary and you need your follow-up questions on Google Forms. Okay, so when there are multiple forces on something, we usually add them up or cancel them out to get a picture of what is the overall force on an object. For example, we've got that the force due to gravity is equal to the force from the table, so overall there's really no force on this book, uh, or they all cancel out if we look at kind of the big picture or net force. And that brings us to my main point, which is the net force is the overall force on an object. So if the book had a weight of 5 newtons, and there was 5 newtons pushing up on it from the table, both of these cancel out because they're in the opposite directions, and so our net force comes out to 0 newtons. So basically there's no force on this book, is what this is trying to say. Or you can treat it as if there's no force on this book, even though there are actually two forces on this book. Okay, so before we get into some rules about net force and things along those lines, let's talk about how do we add up uh, vectors. And in this case, uh, vectors could represent forces. It could represent other things. But from pretty much now on, we're going to be mostly representing vectors with forces. So we've got a force of 5 newtons and a force of 2 newtons acting on this box here. And so forces on the same axis, meaning the x-axis or horizontal axis in this scenario get added up if they're in the same direction. So the net force on this box would be 5 plus 2 or 7 newtons. We can call this the resultant vector because it's the result of these two and this resultant vector represents the net force. So in this case again it's 7 newtons. Please note that my 7 newton arrow is bigger than my 5 and my 2 and it actually should be about the same size as if I took this two arrow and put it right there, or the two vector and put it right there, and it should be about seven, so things should be approximately proportional. All right, so that's what happens when they're in the same direction. What happens when they're in the opposite directions? Well, if we've got five newtons going this way and two newtons going that way, then things that are in the opposite directions cancel each other out, either fully or partially. So in this case, you can treat it as subtraction. So if you've got 5 this way and 2 that way, you subtract those two and we get that we have a net or overall of 3 to the right. You can think of this as the same as uh, figuring out displacement or things along those lines because it's again a vector. So the resultant vector or the net force is 3 newtons. So here's another example. Let's go back to this uh, small girl pushing a wagon. If she's pushing the wagon with a 200 newton force, and the wagon weighs 150 newtons, draw a free body diagram and calculate the net force. Go ahead and pause the video and do it on your paper or trace it on your desk uh, with your finger, not with a pen, uh, or something. Just give it a shot. Again, pause the video, please. All right, welcome back. And so let's get started with this one. We had a small girl pushing a wagon to the left with a 200 newton force, and we pretending that the wagon weighs 150 newtons. So first, let's draw our wagon. Beautiful wagon, isn't it? Next, let's go ahead and put that force on it that we know is always there when something's here on Earth, which is the force due to gravity or weight. So weight is pulling down. We can also draw the kind of supportive force from the ground, which is the normal force going up. We know these two are the same size. We'll come back to that in a second. And then last but not least, we have the force of the push from the girl. Maybe you remember this from a previous lecture. All right, we've drawn in those uh, arrows and labeled them. Hopefully you labeled them a little bit smaller than what I did here because we're going to need to fit in the values as well. So the values were the normal force was 150 and the weight's 150. The normal force is 150 because it has to cancel out the weight. We know it's not moving up or down. The wagon's not sinking. It's not floating. Um, so basically we know in the up and down direction there's basically no overall force. But we also know that the force from the girl is 200 newtons to the left. So, next thing, these two forces, since they cancel out, we can cross them out or take them out of the picture, which leaves us with a force of 200 newtons to the left. This would be the net force, would be 200 newtons to the left in this case. 
Here's one more example. A man pushes a 1,000 Newton box with a 800 Newton force, but the box is experiencing 200 Newtons of friction. Draw a free body diagram and calculate the net force. Again, go ahead and pause the video. Do it on your own. Trace it with your finger on your desk or do something to give it a shot. It's really important that you try. All right, welcome back. Here's our box. We've got weight pulling it down as always. So step one is drawing the free body diagram. We know that the normal force is pushing it up because, well, it's not sinking or floating, so it must be kind of canceled out in that sense. And last but not least, we have a push going to left. Notice that this push is smaller than these two because if we go back to our previous problem, the weight is greater than the force of the push. So it's important, again, that you keep the arrows uh, approximately proportional. All right, now let's put in our values. So we know that the push was 800 newtons. We know that the, um, oh, forgot the friction there. Uh, we know that the uh, normal force was 1,000 newtons and weight was 1,000 newtons. And then the last arrow that I just added in was the frictional force going back to the right. Frictional forces always oppose the direction something is moving. So if it's moving forward, the friction is backwards. If it's moving backwards, the friction is forwards. It's moving up, friction is down. Basically, it's always the opposite. So let's begin to calculate the net force in this case. We know that these two cancel, so we can take them out of the picture. And that leaves us with just the 800 newtons to the left and the 200 newtons to the right, which means uh, they partially cancel. 800 minus uh, 200 in this case gives us a net force of 600 to the left. Now, notice that I've always drawn the net force as a separate diagram or a separate box. You never want to put it on top of whatever it is you drew already. The reason why is because sometimes people mix it up and they start to count it as like a new force. They go, oh, there's 800 of push and 600 of this like net force or whatever that is. So that's why I always keep it separate on a different diagram or just label uh, it on the side, maybe without a diagram. That's it. Three or more bullet points worth of notes, so one to two sentence summary, and you need to do your follow-up questions on Google Forms.